I know we all went through the rolling quarantines last year and it was miserable. We want to open up school, we want to keep kids in school this year. We also operate under the belief that all stakeholders want what's best for students and want school to stay open. Important note here, there are requirements for schools versus recommendations. Schools in California are required to follow California Department of Public Health guidelines and Cal OSHA guidelines for employees. What can be recommended and may inform our decision making would be information from the CDC and the American Pediatrics Association. Um, the foundational principle was that we want kids back in school and to do so in a safe way. Hello. Okay, so my name is Colleen McAvoy. I'm a pediatric nurse practitioner. I work um, at Northern Inu in the pediatric department for the last six years. I also run the high school clinic here, the Bronco Clinic at the high school. And well, I'm really ready for coronavirus to go away and be over. It's really not over with us. We're gonna, there's a lot more unfortunately happening. And Okay, well, I'll try to speak up. Is that a little bit better? Thank you for your patience and understanding. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate you taking the time to listen to what they have to say and what I have to say. Uh, I hope introducing myself isn't part of my two minutes because <laughs> that, that wasn't calculated into this. So anyhow, I'm Lori Gillum. I am a parent here at the Bishop School System. I, um, I'm here to speak to you tonight as a member of what a local so social justice advocacy group has called the loud misguided minority. However, based on the people here tonight, I don't think I'm a minority. Um, I'm an internal medicine hospitalist and I'm the chief medical officer at Northern Inyo Hospital. So I don't take care of children, I take care of adults. And this past winter was really rough. I took care of a lot of our community members in the hospital. And when we have COVID patients in the hospital and they're already sick, I don't have effective treatments. We try a lot of medications, dexamethasone, remdesivir, ivermectin, high dose vitamin C, but none of them have been proven to help. So when we have a disease where we don't have treatment, what I do as a physician is I focus on prevention. Stephen Winsnery, community member and parent in this community. I've lived here almost my entire life. Um, I hear a lot about, this is the law. It's a mandate, it is not a law. Provide the statutory authority that says you have to wear a mask. I want to hear the statutory authority. Give me the line, verse, and code from law that says this is statutorily required. I'm Fran Hunt. I'm a community member. Rarely do people say that about me. I'm Fran Hunt. I'm a community member. I'm active in my church. I'm on a lot of boards. I'm a retired uh, teacher. I'm a grandmother of children in this district. Fears the virus. They cancel the flu because of COVID. It's not that the flu ran away, it's because they canceled the flu. I had the flu two months ago for two days. It was probably this little Delta variant. I didn't get a test, I got well in two days. The whole family had it day after day. And I'm not a lawyer and I'm not a doctor, but I am a teacher. And I am in the classroom. And I see how diseases spread in the classroom. I'm excited at the possibility of being back, the children being back in the schools, but in order to keep those schools open, I think the safest way to do it and make sure our children are safe is to require that everybody be masked. I'm worried about the Delta strain coming and it's way more contagious. It's contagious as chicken pox. Chicken pox, you walk into a room an hour after someone has been there and you can get chicken pox. That's how contagious they think this virus is. And if you don't believe in that science, I'm sorry, and I'm happy to talk to you further about it in the future. I'm just trying to come from a place of protecting children. A really important thing is kids are not at a high risk for this COVID-19. 99.9942% of kids that contract COVID survive, and that's from California Department of Public Health published data. 
what I wanted to point out is that we do not have pediatric ICU beds in Inyo County. In fact, we have very, very few pediatric ICU beds in the state of California, just a few hundred. And if we start seeing kids like we saw last winter with multiple people that were in the ICU, we were doing transports all over the place to um, put people in appropriate level of care. If we need to start doing that with kids, our options for that are much, much less. And so what that means is that we'll have to treat severe COVID in children um, where we don't have the specialty to do that, nor do we have all of the equipment that's necessary for that. So that's another um, piece that's really driving um, our preparedness and our concerns for that. When kids put a mask on for six to 10 hours in a day, oxygen deprivation, they're breathing in carbon dioxide. There's their anxiety, depression. My grandsons hated it, but you know what? They were told to be quiet and wear it by their teacher. And they couldn't take their mask down to take a drink of water in their classroom. That's BS. I would like to ask the board to please follow the guidelines set by our state so that we can ensure that our so that we can ensure that our kids are in school and learning. Thank you. I mean, if you want to hear what, if you don't want to hear what I have to say, I'm happy to stop talking. If you don't want to hear what the Public Health and American Academy of Pediatrics says, then I don't have to speak here. That's fine with me. The rep, uh huh. They asked me to come here to talk about the guidelines that the American Academy of Pediatrics recommends. Do you not trust the American Academy of Pediatrics? <laughs> Okay, I just want to ask, please, could we just be a little more courteous? I've never seen, I know people are so upset and feel so strongly about this issue, but please, but please, I'm asking, can you all be more respectful of the speakers? Thank you. Josh Nicholson, uh, parent, community member. Let's start with some common ground. We're all here because we want to see our children be healthy and thrive. We all have diverse ways of seeing that being accomplished. Today we are here because our politicians want to place masks on our children. There are some commercial mask boxes that state they will not provide any protection against coronavirus or other viruses or contaminants. The expectation of a mask blocking COVID-19 is similar to the expectation of a chain link fence stopping a mosquito. Has anybody ever smelled somebody's fart when they're wearing their mask? Just asking, doesn't work, does it? It's important we get children safely back into schools alongside their friends and their teachers. By helping to prevent the spread of the virus, masks promote public health and keep our students, our teachers, our staff, our families, and our communities safer. When somebody comes into the hospital and they're sick enough to be in the hospital, my hands are fairly tied. I have to, I support patients with oxygen and with some medicines that I'm not sure are going to work. And I've had to watch our community members die this past winter. And so what I just encourage everyone to do is do everything that we can to prevent this disease and prevent from getting this disease. So our children are not responsible for protecting the health of those in the high-risk group for COVID. Every, every family member should be able to make their own independent determination of what is right and what is best for their circumstances, and mask wearing should be a personal choice. I urge this board to side with children's health and welfare and make wearing masks optional, a personal choice. Parents, if the majority of the board don't support your children, I do. I urge you to either send your children to school without masks under the medical and mental health exemptions listed on the California Public Health Officer's guidance for the use of masks or to unenroll them and figure out a way to educate them yourself. So, I wore a mask, okay, I'm vaccinated, I wore a mask because I'm not trying to protect myself, I'm not afraid, I want to protect everybody else and I'm wearing this can protect one child, one child from getting COVID, that's worth it to me.